I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 9th of August, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to be answering a question about what do you do about mail delivery or post here in Nicaragua. We're going to get to that right after the bump. Before we get into today's video, just showing off some of the new t-shirts that we have. This is the yellow ones, and uh, we're getting new shipments every day, so we're still giving them out here in Nicaragua, so it's gonna be a little while until they're available as swag, but just a couple weeks until they're available in Nicaragua, and real soon they're gonna be available in the United States. So the question has come up a number of times, uh, but we don't have a video specific to it. So I wanna answer, what do you do about mail delivery here in Nicaragua? And the simple answer is, let it go. You don't want mail delivery. Before we even worry about how you do it, think about why you would want it. And the answer should be you don't. Even in the United States, mail delivery is not something you generally want, but we've had it for so long, so many things are conditioned around it that you start to assume that it's a necessity. You start to want it because people use it. But the mail causes a lot of problems. It causes a inability to know if mail is going to be, or messages are going to be delivered. There's a reason why businesses don't use mail, they use email. Because with email, there's a way to guarantee delivery. There's ways to know if you've opened it. You're able to respond and guarantee that you've had it, that you've read it. There's all kinds of mechanisms that are fast and simple and environmentally friendly, but the mail is not. It encourages a creation of trash. It encourages a lot of use of, you know, if you're just sending a letter, you're using gasoline, human labor, paper, manufacturing, all kinds of things have to go into sending a letter where an email is instant and efficient and doesn't require all those resources. You don't want to be spending gasoline or diesel just to send a message to someone over a matter of weeks. So the concepts of mail mostly have gone away. And even in the United States, it's rarely useful, but we're so conditioned to it. Like when we lived in the US, I was always like, I hate having the mail, how can I get rid of it? But we're never able to, because legally they make you have it, so you're stuck with it. And because you're stuck with it, the government uses it for certain things, such as guaranteeing uh, uh, delivery of legal documents but you don't know if you're ever gonna receive those legal documents, which causes all kinds of problems. And people say, well, no, it's really reliable. Trust me, I've lived in the United States. You're not gonna fool me. I've had things take weeks to get delivered and tons of things never be delivered. We've opened cases with the FBI before because things never make it across the country or when they do, they are so delayed that we know something's happening to them. It is, it is not very reliable. A lot of people don't realize if you're not doing business transactions during mail that, that many of the messages they send may have never gotten through or may have been very much delayed and people just aren't responding so you don't check on it. But when you have a business that is constantly sending things back and forth, you tend to notice delays or missing messages really quickly. So in doing that, we've been quite aware over the years. And funny enough, my father has a story when he was in college of someone he went to college with was committing mail fraud. And he actually watched the, the, the federal, uh, the FBI raid the university and catch the guy and catch his stash of stolen messages. But those, you know, and while they did a good job of catching it, that's a real thing. It's so easy to intercept and steal messages it does happen. There's reasons why they had to make so many strong laws about it. Okay, all that aside, you don't want mail. And I know you're like, well, I want this magazine. I want this. No, you don't. You, you got to move past that, right? As, as an international traveler, as a person moving abroad, any ties that you have to the mail system, let them go. You will not be happy if you can't, right? If that is a make or break it thing for you, you must stay in the United States or maybe Canada. There is no way that you are going to have a mail system like you have in the United States anywhere else in the world. I've lived all over the world. You are never going to replicate that. And even in the United States, it is rapidly failing and constantly being talked about being taken away because it is way past its point of usefulness and now is a blight on society. It is a massive cost to the country and it hurts the country a lot, but we're so ingrained. And I understand, right, when you're my age, you're in this transition, like we've always had it. We're so used to it. It's hard to change. If you're older than me, a lot of people still feel that there's some important personal uh, formality or intimacy 
to a handwritten letter or to at least a letter that you're signing and, and putting in the mail or Christmas cards and those kinds of things. And I get it. Tradition has pushed that very heavily. Tradition that was selling stamps and delivery services. It's kind of like Hallmark. You don't really need to send cards. That's an American tradition of consumerism. But I understand that if you've had it your entire life and a lot of your friends are still consumerist, they still see spending money on sending a message as being more important than the message. But it's important to understand that that's what we're talking about. It used to be getting the message there was what was important, but during the massive consumerism uh, uh, bubble of the United States in the 19, in the 20th century, we had so many things become send this, spend lots of money, buy expensive things as a means of showing that you care about someone. It is hard to let that go and it, it requires both the person who wants to do it and the person who wants to receive it to agree that that's an archaic system. So I get why people are stuck in that mode and that is something you have to give up. But moving abroad can be your break from that, right? We used to send Christmas cards every year. We do not anymore. We can't. It is not a reasonable option. Yes, we could hire a service in the United States to do that. If that was absolutely something you could not do without, there are ways to do it. They'll be costly. They'll be a pain in the butt. But you could if that was the only thing. Oh, my friends simply require, require this. They will not understand that I'm not going to do it. Okay, there's ways to work around it. But by and large, mail service, move past it. That itself is not something you're going to use. You may have a question. What am I going to do if I have to receive a package in the United States? Like it's a legal uh, summons or something like that. And there's just, you have to have an address for it. Well, you need to work around that, but that's generally pretty easy. If you have family members, often someone's willing to receive your mail for you because when it's an address that already exists, I'll use my father as an example. My father lives in New York. He already gets mail. So all his junk mail and all that's already coming. My address, sometimes sending something to him has no, uh, uh, no cause for a, a growth of his junk mail. Right, simply by adding my name as someone who can receive mail at his address, he doesn't get extra flyers, he doesn't get extra circulars, he doesn't get extra yellow pages or anything like that because of that. So it, it doesn't have any of that overhead. And he only gets a letter every month or so. Right, So even just processing my mail is very, very minor. Uh, so being able to send it to him makes life very easy. Most people will have some family member or friend who's willing to take the odd letter for them and set it aside or put it into a pile or take a picture of it, scan it or whatever. Quite often my father would just throw something in the scanner, send me an email, and then I have it because there's really never a time that I need something by mail unless it's like a credit card and obviously you can't scan that. So that's one answer. And for almost all people, that is the answer. That's so simple and so minor of an ask that everyone has family that will do that. But maybe you don't, or maybe you just feel really uncomfortable asking someone to do that. Or maybe you're getting a lot of mail for some reason and it has to be processed. Well, okay, you're the outlier, but that's okay. So we also as a company have to deal with that kind of stuff and the people who used to deal with all of that are all in Nicaragua. So we all have this challenge. So what you do in that case, and we know other people who do this as well, is you hire a service in the United States that handles your mail for you. Now you have a professional whose job it is to go through your mail. And if you get 20 messages, 20 letters a day, and they have to open them up and scan them for you or do something with them, not a problem. It includes things like sometimes we receive paper checks, they deposit them for us. That's an important part of the service. And yes, some businesses in the United States still Still use checks. Some people still use checks. So that's something that can be done. Uh, they also will do things like get our credit cards because obviously from time to time our American banks are going to issue us new credit cards. This happened to me just a few weeks ago. What do they do? They open it up. They see that it's a credit card. They say, do you need this? And I say, yes, it's a credit card. I do actually want that. They make sure it's a really one for me and not like, you know, sometimes you get scam cards in the mail or whatever. They, they verify with me. They send me a picture of it. I say, yes, I'd like that. Not a hurry. Just get it to me in the next month or so. They accumulate those things. Maybe it's one item. Maybe it's 20. They then put those things together and they ship it to a service, which we're going to get to in a second. So it will get to me, but it does not happen by mail. It does not happen by post. So the first piece is letting go and saying, I don't want mail. This is not something I desire at best or at worst. It's something I'm stuck with and sometimes have to process. But at best, it is something you can eliminate entirely. You'll probably fall somewhere in the middle, but you don't want it. It is a horrible thing. It is not good for you. It is not good for other people. It is not good for the environment. It is not good for business. It's just, it's a problem and it's mostly gone away. Most of the world has moved away from it and Americans 
and to some degree Canadians and to some degree Brits, live in a world where mail was much more robust than other places in the world, so it has lingered on much longer because they did a better job with it. But at least in America, that doing a good job with the mail thing is long past. It is no longer affordable either. The cost just keeps going up and the service quality just keeps going down. So now here in Nicaragua, what happens? So the first thing is, there are no addresses, so that would undermine the ability to have mail. There's also no mailboxes. This entire mechanism of mail doesn't exist. There are not mail delivery people. There's no one's going to pick something up. There's no mailbox. None of that stuff. So you will completely, completely separate yourself from the world of mail. It's just like that. It doesn't exist to anymore. It's not like you have to wean yourself off. It's cold turkey. It is gone. Now, when I lived in Europe, we tried to use the mail service and it was a horrific experience. We estimated that sending a small package, something that weighed just about an ounce, maybe two ounces, very simple, very small, was sent from the United States to Spain without checking with us first. We estimate that the total cost of sending that package between all the people involved, all the time that was put in, was roughly $1,000. That same item that was sent could have been purchased across the street for about $10 in a few minutes. It was that easy. It was a very cheap item available right on the same block that we were living. Um, and, and this is all just because no one paid attention to how you behave internationally, and they thought things had to come from the United States, but it made no sense whatsoever, and they sent it, and it took a month. It required driving all over the country. There was no mail delivery. Just because you were there, they wouldn't deliver mail to you. It was not a thing. So even in Europe, even in the most advanced European countries, big, rich European countries, there's no reasonable using the mail service. In theory, if you send a letter, it might eventually get there. It's a terrible idea. Don't try it even in those countries. Uh, we have sent things to Bolivia. I was unable to stop people. Again, no one listens to me. They sent stuff to Bolivia. They're like, it'll be fine. It's USPS. It might be slow. It might be, it may not be the cheapest, but it's definitely going to get there eventually. And it was four years ago. Everything that was sent was stolen. Right? We don't know if it was stolen in the U.S. We don't know if it was ever shipped to Bolivia. We don't know if it was received. We don't know anything. All we know is it was put in the mail in the U.S. and never seen from again. Right? No records, no recourse, no nothing. And of course, the vendors are like, you put it in international mail? How crazy are you? So that's where we were left. Don't do that. Anytime you have to, and sometimes you do have to, like with your credit cards, send something from the United States, Canada, wherever, to another country, just shipping it internationally in general. When you're going to do that, the general rule is don't make it something personal that you absolutely have to receive. That's a bad idea. If you have something like that, consider only getting it when someone flies and can bring it personally. Once in a while, that's not an option. Sometimes you just have to send something. Generally, you're okay, but we're gonna talk about how to do it, but try not to do that, right? Now, what do we send here? Credit cards, definitely. Sometimes we buy things from Amazon and we decide to have them sent here. That's an option, but it doesn't use the mail. This is very important. There's nothing that I will say should ever make you think, okay, so I can use the mail for, no. You can never use the mail, you can never use the post. That will lose everything 100% guaranteed. There will never work, not an option. What you can do is when necessary, use a carrier service. This is true everywhere in the world. And in the United States, we have ones like FedEx and UPS. Do not use them or DHL. None of the ones that you have in the US should you ever use to Nicaragua. To some countries, it's okay, but to Nicaragua, it is not. But those are the types of services that you can use. They're the only type of services you can use. It must be a third-party private company. It must be someone with international uh, connections and, and the right to ship into the country, which is the problem. Those do not have the right into Nicaragua. So when they get stuff here, assume it's gone. Right? They will tell you they can, they cannot. All shippers for Nicaragua must be Nicaraguan. So that is the only reasonable way you're going to do it. And the one we typically recommend, and I'm not getting a kickback from them, I don't even have an account with them myself, I use a friend's account, but uh, Nikabox is the most common one that everyone talks about. Nikabox allows you to get an account here in country, they make a post office box or a similar for you in Miami, Anything you need to have, you send to that address in Miami. They accumulate it for you. And when your package is ready, they send it on through a cargo service, a third party private cargo service that they own. They're the subsidiary of a larger cargo service. And it is flown for you into the country, at which point it can be delivered. However, that can be a problem. So 
What's handy is you can go pick it up in Managua and simply not have it go anywhere, have them just keep it there, or you can have it brought to your city, or you can try having it brought to your house. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Now this takes a little while, but it actually comes. You can say, well, the, but the mail, I need something faster. No, that's never going to arrive. Nothing is slower than never, All right? So uh, you'd use Nika Box or similar. We have used some others and had good luck with them too. And you can send electronics, you can send all kinds of things, right? Nothing illegal, but you can send things that generally you'd be like, can I send that? Yes, as long as it's legal, you can send it. Some of them, you have to pay your taxes by the weight. Some of them have to do it by size. Like they have different mechanisms that they use. Uh, so sometimes you want to play around with different services to see which makes sense for what you're doing, but they will get it and they then have national delivery, which can be a problem. So it's often best to send it to their local office. Like for example, I live in Leon, so you might have it go to the Leon office and the company that oversees Nika Box's Cargo Trans. So go to the Cargo Trans office out by the highway and you can just go pick it up when it arrives. They might bring it to your house. That can be tricky because there's no addresses. Anything that involves coming to your house is a problem, but getting it to your city is not very reliable. Uh, we know lots of people who use this. It's used all the time. Sometimes it's a little bit expensive, but you don't want to use it often. You want to very carefully decide what makes sense, do it properly, think it through, only send what's necessary, and it'll work fine. So there is processes, but you can never ever use the mail. And I know no matter what I say, someone's going to say, but I want to use the mail for, you're going to miss it. It doesn't exist. You might as well just set whatever it is you're going to send on fire. There's no better chance of it getting here. The dust from the smoke drifting over the Atlantic and settling during a rain onto Nicaragua is more likely to get what you want to send here than if you put it into the mail. Don't try it. There's no exceptions because the system doesn't exist here. So then, of course, the question becomes, but what about the other things? What about things in Nicaragua? Well, you don't need mail for anything, right? Like in the United States, what do you need to send from person to person in mail that isn't the kind of stuff you would also send internationally? You say, well, what about bills and such? Well, you don't need mail for that, and it should be electronic. This is a huge miss in Nicaragua. I have no idea what's wrong with the country that no one does this. There should be online accounts with email that gets you your bills. There is not, so granted, that's crazy. Nicaragua, get on this. I don't know who to yell at, right? Because it's not the government. It's like this individual power company and this individual uh, ISP and this like trash color, like everybody does this in their own little ad hoc terrible way. It's awful. Um, and what they do because they universally don't use online accounts because everyone will ask about that too. And that makes total sense. Nicaragua is generally a very advanced technological country with infrastructure and not like satellites and stuff, and uh, uh, they should be able to handle this no problem. Absolutely everybody has a phone. Like, why isn't this a thing? Why don't they just do this electronically and make everything really cheap? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that, but it's a problem. And so I get asked that a lot, but I'm sure you can pay your stuff online. No, you cannot. But I'm sure you have an online account. No, you do not, right? I don't know what service you're thinking of, but we don't have that in Nicaragua. Trust me, I've lived in multiple places. I've had lots of different types of accounts and I've yet to have one that gives me an online account of any sort. Maybe Claro from Mexico, they might have it, but even my Tigo, I can't go online and do anything, but I do have an app on my phone that lets me top it up. So it's in the middle, right? I don't have to go anywhere physically for Tigo, but Claro does things online and it doesn't work. We have tons of problems with it. Uh, they haven't got that figured out yet. We cannot find our online information. And when it says paid, it doesn't necessarily work. Like it's nuts. What almost everyone does, and this is a terrible mechanism, granted, right? Would having mail be better? Well, it would be for this one specific thing, but there's so many problems with it that you still don't want it. This is better than having the mail, trust me, but it's terrible. What they do is everyone who has a bill for you, so let's say your electric bill, your water bill, your internet bill, they simply walk up and either hand it to you in your house. This is one of those things that drives me crazy. People coming to the door for unnecessary things. This is why I just want an email or better yet, let me auto pay. Right? Like I would happily set up an auto pay for all this stuff. I'll review it later, right? You overcharge me by 20 bucks. I'll, I'll find a way to get the money back later. Just don't interrupt me. No, they come to the house, they hand you the bill. Uh, if you're not there, they'll come back and hand you the bill. Uh, sometimes they'll just stick it into the door. Or they'll, they'll like put it into your fence or whatever. We find them floating around in the yard. It is a major problem. You have to be on the lookout for it. And it makes it very easy to give you the wrong one or to give yours to someone else. 
There's a lot of problems with the system, but that is how it is done. That is why there's no online accounts because it's uniform. They do them all the same. And that's why there is no mail delivery. They don't need to. Every company that's doing this just goes around locally and hands things to you because they're able to do that. Because if they're in a position to deliver you whatever service, internet, power, water, whatever, they're also in a position to get to your house. But universally, maybe people are not. Maybe they're traveling around in cars and you don't live on a road that can take cars. That would cause a problem. So they don't have a universal system for things. I'm gonna be campaigning throughout my life here to get things digitized and find ways to get that into the hands, at least of most people, to at least make it an option, because I think it will lower costs and improve efficiency and get people paid. And it's just good for everybody, right? But that's that's a big leap for the country and not something they're prepared to do today. Maybe in a year, right? This could be something that's coming soon. All it takes is one or two large uh, vendors to say, you know what? Mm, this could this could really speed things up, get us paid better, and keep track of things. Be like, yeah, let's do it, right? Teco, I could see being one of the first, a little bit more advanced than some of the companies. And then the power company being like, okay, yeah, that worked out pretty well. Let's do that. At least cut down dramatically on lost information, cut down dramatically on people walking around handing things. It would help a lot, but it would cost jobs. So there's an encouragement to create jobs currently. So partly it would uh, be better if the country saw an influx of careers happening so that uh, unemployment dropped, at which point companies would be like, oh, we're no longer beneficial to just employ people to walk around and hand things out. It would be nice if those people were able to do something more useful. So we'll move to electronic transmission for accounts and so forth. So there's, there's, there's steps that may need to happen to make that really make sense or to put that pressure on com country, uh, companies in the country. Uh, but that's, that, is, that is a limitation, but you don't need mail for that. And you don't send things in by mail, right? You don't send payments by mail. You make payments by either visiting the office. So let's say you're going to pay the electric bill. That's uh, uh, this, uh, <clears throat> this Norte here in Leon or Desur in like San Juan del Sur, uh, which is just dis like distribution, I think, north and south. Uh, and you just go to your local office, which is in the city. And you can pay them there or they have satellite offices. You can pay them there or almost everybody you can pay at your local either Super Express or AM PM and once in a, while, in a while at one of the banks or at a uh, pulperia. So you have lots of options. Most people have a Super Mini somewhere near them and that is the standard Super Express and AM PM, big national chains. They're in nearly every neighborhood. Now there's many in many neighborhoods, like they're growing fast and they have really good payment systems. So you can just walk in with cash or with a bank card and make your payments there. Plus at the grocery store sometimes and some ATMs let you make the payments there as well. So there's lots of options you just need to find the one that makes sense for you locally, and maybe you'll have a few. And sometimes you have some bills you can pay online. You won't get the bill online, the invoice, but you can pay it online sometimes. So those things, you just have to figure out uh, individually. You're only going to have so many bills. This is not a country where you tend to have sprawling bills like in the U.S. So generally, you're going to have just a handful. You'll figure out how to pay them pretty quickly based on how yours work and what your local payment receipt offices are. And that's all you'll do, and it'll be nice and easy. One trip for us, it's the Super Express in Sutiava. We can just swing in, you walk up. It's, it's never that busy. The line is never more than three minutes. And you just get up and you say, oh, I got to pay this. You give an account number, put this note on it for my account, and it's done. And it's a direct bank transfer, so it makes things very, very easy. One of the hardest things is just understanding that all the mechanisms here are completely different. It's not like the United States or Canada where it's like, well, this is what it's like in the US and then Canada tweaks it just the tiniest bit and everything really resembles the processes in the sister country. Down here, they pretty much started from scratch without taking any clues from or cues from the United States. And so things like, we just didn't do mail and uh, you know, international delivery, just not much of a thing, you gotta do cargo. And we don't do electronic accounts and we don't do mail for accounts and we don't take checks. I've never seen a check, I've never heard of a check in country. If you need to do something like a check, you're gonna, you know, you're, you, your friend borrowed some money and we don't have uh, uh, you know, a lot of those, those payment apps here that's not a big thing maybe maybe there will be some in the future maybe you can use some in the us like paypal does exist you can use it but that can be problematic or just awkward right and so traditionally in the united states as well you would write a check to someone when i was a kid that's what you would do you're not gonna venbo or whatever those things are i don't even know what those things are called we don't use them here so i don't have any uh which is funny i do have zell right so so zell if you have a friend who's also on a zell system you can just send them money, right, in the United States. I guess that's for like Wells Fargo people. 
and uh, so that's very simple. We don't have that here yet, exactly. But if you're on the same bank, which is basically the same thing if you're both on Zelle, if you're both on BAC or Lafise, it's very easy. You can do those transfers through your bank, sometimes online, and so it's just as easy as using Zelle, more or less. Um, and if you're not, if you have to go between banks, which is very common, then you just go to Super Express or any of the, those places that have the agent for the bank you want to use. Um, so let's say you, your friend is on Lafise and you need to pay them uh, $50, right? You borrowed some money, they took you out to dinner or whatever, and you're paying them back. So you just go in, you take your $50, and you walk to the counter, and it can be in dollars or Cordoba. It just has to be in the same denomination as the account that you're putting it into. So it's not a common for people here to have both a uh, dollars bank account and a Cordoba bank account so that they can work in either one. A little bit of a nuisance, of course, uh, but it does give some flexibility. And the same thing would happen in the United States if you wanted to work in, say, euros and dollars. That's an option, but you have to find a bank that's willing to hold an account in euros, and then any money you put in, if it's euros, will go into euros. If it's dollars, will go into dollars. And if you want to move between them, you have to do a, an exchange. Uh, same as going to any exchange place, but probably at a better rate because it's your bank who's making their money on other things rather than the exchange exchange service. So you tend to get the best rank rates from your own bank, at least in the United States here, you get them from the people on the street. We've done an, ep done an episode about how you do it from there. Uh, my battery died, which is why we switched to the other location. I um, am recording this. I believe the audio is working. I'm doing a test. I did several videos where there was no audio. Uh, I could see there was no audio. This time I saw there was audio and it seems to be working. So we're, we're working on getting around some of these severe GoPro problems. So fingers crossed because it is so easy to make payments at the Super Express, at the AMPM, at the corner store, and because it's such a solid mechanism and because everyone already does this. That's important. This is the culture. This is how people have made payments for a very long time. It is what they're used to. It is what they expect. It, it is just really easy. And because people are out and about all the time, it is the lifestyle. It is what you do here. Uh, whether it's whether it's going out to a club, of course, that's but that's not what I mean. I mean they're just outside. You're just going to be outside your house all the time. It's just it's just the lifestyle. I realize that you personally may decide that's not what you want to do, and you're going to stay home quite often, and that's fine. But in general, being Nicaraguan means being outside the entire day, or if you're inside, that your house is wide open, and living in places where it's quick and easy to get to, those things are natural parts of life here, and it's very hard to really explain how much that is that is true. And I was reading an article, um, it was an opinion piece, so it doesn't matter, really matter where it was, but it was an interesting opinion piece just this morning, um, and it was actually talking about women's health issues and how women are taking on many of the traditional, and this has been going on for, for decades, right, taking on many of the traditional male health issues like uh, heart disease and such, and now they're taking on uh, alcoholism and binge drinking, a lot of stuff like that, as society shifts to uh, more equal treatment in the workplace and things like that, then women are also uh, being introduced to other uh, things that, that tend to come with some of those, those workplace things like binge drinking and so forth. Anyway, that wasn't really the point. The point with the article really had an interesting point about how American neighborhoods in general are organized and designed around the nuclear family. The idea that you will have a family residence somewhere, it's a very strong location, you will travel to work some distance, you will travel home, your children will travel to school, they will travel home, and from the hours of 5 p.m. until, say, 7 a.m., you will be a nuclear family in your nuclear fortress and live in that protected neighborhood. You may visit the neighbors, you may go out to dinner, you may do things, but you will do so as a family, traveling as a unit, going to and from your home, which you will lock up when you're there, you will close yourself in, you will probably watch TV, you will probably, in most cases, eat dinner inside the house. And so much of the organization of the American household has traditionally been to move to the suburbs, have a home that is isolated to some degree. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not to be social, it's not that you never go out, it's not that you don't have friends. It is the idea that your home life, from the time you get off work or get out of school until you return, is primarily dominated by a close-knit structure of your parents and children in a house that is dedicated to them apart from other people. Your neighbors are ra rarely related to you, you are essentially a, a floating bubble of a nuclear family. And the U.S. has promoted this, and they use terms like nuclear family strongly as a, as a positive promotion of that lifestyle. And here in Nicaragua and much of the world, uh, that is not the, the goal, right? It's not that they don't have strong family structures, but they target the extended family. For example, you're much more likely to live in a home with uh, further uh, related family members, whether it's grandparents, nieces, uh, uncles, whatever. Those people tend to be uh, more in a single family 
dwelling or a multifamily dwelling, I mean. And uh, in many cases, you're going to live in a neighborhood where you have family. So it may be that you have your parents down the street, you have a sibling around the corner, and go, you know, your kids will walk around the block and interact. And in the evenings, you'll hang out maybe on the street or at someone else's house. Those things are very, very normal. The idea that you would come home directly after work, be inside the house, uh, close yourself in and just be parents and children inside uh, that, that dwelling for the, for the duration of the evening is relatively uncommon here. Of course it happens. Um, and as a North American family who has moved here, we certainly notice that we are much more likely to come home and be like, oh, we're staying in this evening. And what are the kids doing? They're staying in this evening. And what are we doing? Well, if we're going to do something as a family, we might watch TV, we might play a video game. We've got things we love to do with each other. Dungeons and Dragons, right? We're going to do some of that stuff, eat dinner together. But it tends to be, we, we go a little bit and we live a little bit farther out. We tend to bring a little bit, bit of that suburban nuclear family uh, living to Nicaragua. But we also allow Nicaragua to influence us and we go out and live outside and do a lot of this stuff. That was a long explanation to something we weren't really talking about, but the point being, because you're out, because you're wandering the neighborhood, because you're outside, because the barriers to going to the corner store are trivial, right? For a lot of people, like I lived in La Borio a year ago, and which is the kind of downtown here in Leon. And this would be true anywhere in Nicaragua for the most part. And the smaller the town, the more true it is. Uh, the And, and Managua is the only bigger town. Um, you, you really tend to be outside like all the time. And so when we were in La Borrio, the ability to go to the pharmacy or uh, the corner store, the pulperia, uh, to the local church, uh, to several other pulperias, uh, places that sold food, a fritanga, which is like a tiny outdoor restaurant, all of those things were easier to do. This is very important than for me today to walk to the back of my garden. Let me say that again. All those shops lay within the effort of walking to the farthest point of my garden here. Now, I have a large garden, but come on. It's still just a garden around a house. All those things were so close. We could yell out the door to so many people. And lots of people lived in that zone as well. So if we had family there, it could be talking to cousins, diagonal across the street. It'd be stopping in at the, the distant relatives who live next door, the grandparents who live in the block behind us, whatever. All that would often be very close. So the idea that you would go outside and go to the corner store to make a payment is, is completely effortless. Um, and, and I should say, like all of this, it's less effort for me to go to the back of my garden than it is for my father to go to his mailbox, right? All those things were well within maybe two thirds of the distance from my father's front door, my childhood front door to my mailbox, which is less than the distance from my father's front door now to his mailbox now, but that's, he's got a weird situation. Um, but that, that idea that in the United States, if you were to say you have to go to the corner store, even the, the closest gas station, you'd be like, come on, that's... I can do it, but I don't want to. That's that's a bit of work. I got to get dressed. I got to go outside. You got to get in the car. You got to drive there, park, deal with it. It's fine, right? If that's what you're doing for the evening, it's not. See, you would be weird to complain about it. You don't want to do that. I get it. It's a lot of work. There's that barrier of going outside in the United States. It just It's a mental barrier, if nothing else. But it is. You got to put on shoes. You got to do all this stuff. And, and getting in the car and like starting it up. And, it's all a bit of effort. It adds up. It really does. So, so the Americans, the Canadians on here that are, that are like, I, don't, I really don't want to go to the corner. You know, I don't care if it's a CVS or if it's a, you know, a, 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 a Wawa or whatever. It feels like too much effort for the majority of you. A few of you live in cities and it's not, but for the majority of you, and those of you that it doesn't seem like too much effort for, if you picture other people in, in like the suburbs, you're like, oh yeah, no, I see it. Um, here, it's, it's so much the opposite. The idea that you could go to the corner store would be any amount of effort. They'd be like, what? It's just a few steps. Like while I'm talking about it, it would be like walking over here and do 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 do. And 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 I'm giving an amount of distance that's actually pretty similar to what it was at my last house. And from my front door, I'd now be able to buy some milk, maybe two or three more steps. That's it. That's all the farther it was to get to two different stores. Double that distance we'd be to one or two more. When it's that close, when it's that simple. The idea that you're going to go out and make a payment that way is suddenly like, oh, that's actually easier than writing the information on an envelope and putting it in the mail. Actually easier. I don't know where a pen is. I don't have a stamp. Ugh, I don't have to deal with that stuff. I'm just going to take this $5 I have, walk over here and give it to him. Where are you putting it? This number, done. Thanks. See you next week. See you next month. Whatever. It really is easy. It feels, two Americans, trust me, when they first said it, the first time I have to go do it, I'm like, I have to do what? And then you do it and you're like, okay, I like the system. 
now that I know, now that I've done it, I actually like it. It's really easy. Now from here, it's a little bit farther for us. We have to, but we go past the place, I don't know, six times a day. So just pull over, step in. Sometimes we buy an ice cream while we're there. Not a big deal. Very nice and easy. So that is why we don't have mail delivery here in Nicaragua. But more importantly, that is why you don't care. It just, it just isn't important. Let it go, let it go, let it go. You don't need mail anymore. That's what it's like, right? And if you, if you stop asking about mail, I promise not to sing that anymore. But if you keep asking, there might be more of that song, so you've been warned. Okay, so if you, <laughs> I hope this was helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, hit me up the link above, buymeacoffee.com slash scottallmiller. Comes directly to me. If you need assistance on moving to Nicaragua, we we'll need to find out more information, info at relocatenicaragua.com. That is the email address. Just send an email there. Do our best to respond. We're very, very slow at that, but we will do our best to get back to you. Post on social media, put those links on, on Facebook, on uh, the, the Instagram, whatever you've got. Tell some friends about it, shoot them an email, send them a link, say, check out Scott Allen Miller. He's got some interesting stuff about Nicaragua. It's gonna blow your mind. It is not the place you think it is. Tell your, your family, tell your friends. I will see all of you tomorrow.